So basically, this video is the result of popular demand. So after we posted our first video about Amazon DSP delivery, we have received thousands and thousands of comments from viewers who are interested to know more about the program. So in today's conversation, I want to talk to you about the paperwork that you must absolutely have to get approved into the program right away. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing marvelous, if you ever ask me. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee, vodka, or tea, <laughs> if you want, and uh, I will see you right after this. All right, in today's conversation, I want to talk to you about the Amazon DSP delivery business. So the paperwork you must absolutely have to get approved right away. And this is really important. And this is in conjunction to our earlier video. And we roll into, we wanted to really dig a little deeper here. So over, let me give you first an overview. So the thing is that uh, the Amazon DSP delivery business is a great opportunity, really. Okay. And uh, Amazon will notify you as a candidate prior to your on-site interview in other words if you are selected into the program they will basically notify you and they'll let you know because you ha you're going to have to go through an interview for for uh, approval okay and if you successfully pass the on-site interview you will likely be invited to join the future dsp program it's really important and uh, the good thing is if you have any question about the program you can email dsp at amazon.com and 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 uh, based on our experience they are very responsive they will get back to you quickly okay and that when we talk about dsp the amazon dsp we think about a couple of things the location the traffic around that location your own business uh, application in other words are you a legit business or are you a sole proprietorship okay and it's really important because the amazon will pay attention to those elements okay and the thing here is that you're going to have to wait a little bit if you want to join the future DSP program because Amazon is constantly uh, changing their requirements, constantly adjusting to new realities. We just had, we just came out of uh, COVID and uh, so COVID had some s strong logistical implications and Amazon is trying to readjust the program. And the new, fu the new future DSP program is even better. It's open to more people, to more businesses, to more uh, entrepreneurs, okay? And what I want to say here is that don't quit your job to be a future DSP unless you have the resources to survive the, the hiatus, the, the gap between uh, when you join the, the DSP program and the time it takes for your business to pick up. Because you got to think about that, okay? And uh, so how long would you be uh, a future DSP? It really depends. It really depends on a couple of things. It depends on your, on your location. It depends on uh, the trains in your geography. It's very important. And you can you cannot apply as a DSP owner with more than uh, with more partners. Okay, only one person may apply in any given application to become a delivery service partner owner. Okay, and the thing here is that during the interview process, be actually be uh, truthful. Don't lie at all because they will find out sooner or later. So the first paperwork I want you to have on hand, and this is very critical, is your resume. If you want to be accepted into the program, into the Amazon DSP program, you need to have a strong resume. And on that resume, don't lie. Okay, be truthful here. And we are talking about making sure that you have your personal information and an up-to-date resume that talks about you, talks about your... Uh, yeah, your overall life in your professional life, okay? And there are five main resume parts based on our research. If you want to uh, ace the Amazon DSP program interview, you want to have a, a wonderful resume that has five components. Your contact information, your resume introduction, your professional experience, your skills, and your education. 
Those, those are the, far, the five parts. So when we talk about contact information, I'm talking about first name and last name, right? Email, phone number, mailing address, that's optional. Your LinkedIn, that's optional. Your current job title, because Amazon is interested in you. And uh, in terms of resume introduction, this is a quick three to four sentence summarization to the hiring manager that details your experience relevant skills and other key qualifications so there are main, there are four main types of uh, resume introductions you, so you have the resume summary the resume uh, objective the resume profile and the summary of your qualifications and the third part is your professional experience so amazon dsp is interested in knowing uh, what kind of employer or company name you have worked at your location city and state your employment date and three to five bullet points describing your responsibilities and accomplishments. So this is important to when we when especially when you talk about accomplishments, do not forget use action verb. Nobody wants to actually uh, hear your passive voice here. Use act, the active voice, and it has to be active verbs. Okay. Number four, they want to see your skills. So, and I'm talking to you about things that will get you into the program real fast. So you want to actually. Uh, Talk about your, your your soft skills, your hard skills, your technical skills and whatnot, okay? And when we talk about hard skills, we basically mean technical skills, okay? And uh, also, last but not the least, talk about your education. Yeah, you want to be a you want to be in the program. Talk about your education, your school name, the, the location, the degree that you uh, got, and the graduation year. So it's important, okay? And uh, there are other six additional parts of a resume. Those are optionals, but you can include them. Who knows? This can actually get you uh, on top of the Amazon DSP program. So things like training, cert certification, uh, and licenses. If you have language skills, that's good. If you have projects and freelance work, that's good. If you have volunteer work, that's good. If you have awards and honors, that's good. If you have hobbies and interests, that's good. That way you give a full-fledged overview of your personality. I want you to also, also include your work history. Boss, I'm still talking to you about the paperwork you absolutely need if you want to be uh, approved into the Amazon DSP delivery business program. Talk about your work history. Here, you want to be very, very detailed, very thorough here, okay? So we're talking about your full work history, including dates of employment. So when we talk about this, you, we're talking about the work experience section on a resume, okay? And it has to be detailed, a detailed summary of your past work experience, especially as it relates to delivery, to the delivery business, okay? And it's super important. Amazon DSP wants to know how you survived in other jobs, how you performed in those jobs, where were your interactions with uh, your colleagues, your team members, okay, what kind of performance did you have, what kind of uh, achievements did you have. It's really important for them, okay? And where do you put work experience on a resume? It depends on uh, the resume. Because you remember, you can have a chrono chronological resume, right? So this is built around the employment history section. You can have a functional resume that actually puts forward your skills, accomplishments, job traits, and other personal characteristics. And you can have also a combination resume. So this is basically a hybrid. This is a, a combo of your chronological resume and a functional resume. Whatever you have to do, just make sure that you have a solid resume, okay? And when you talk about how do you write a work experience section and, and actually impress the Amazon DSP delivery business uh, interview, uh, interviewer rather, the thing is you want to make sure that you do not include the job description. We're not interested. Why? The, the whole thing is we want to see your actions. We want to see your goals. We're not interested in a very stale, lethargic job description. That, that, that doesn't tell a lot about how you perform. Boss, think about it. You're just giving me a, a, a series of sentences that don't mean anything. I want to hear from you what you did at, in that job. You want to tailor it to a specific opening. And in this case, this is the Amazon DSP delivery business. This is important. You want to use some keywords that are important. Okay. Delivery, business, delivery. These are keywords that Amazon wants to see. You want to show your problem solving skills. Okay. And also you want to qualify your past results. 
very important. And if you want to really uh, impress the Amazon DSP in interviewer, make sure that you are using bullet points. Avoid the buzzwords, okay? Nobody wants to hear buzzwords. Don't try to razzle, dazzle people with the buzzwords. Who needs that? And use action verbs. Very important, okay? Very, very important. So, uh, yeah. I want you to talk about your income. The, I mean, they're going to ask you your income anyway. Amazon is going to ask you your income. So, this is some kind of paperwork you need to have. So, you want to talk about your current income information. And when we talk about that, we are talking about proof of income because Amazon will want to see that you have income, but they want you to prove it. So you can have a proof of income letter. So this letter summarizes and verifies your income and employment. Okay, so this letter can be written by you, an employer, an accountant, or a social worker, depending on your situation. Okay, and don't underestimate this. This is really, really important. And also you want to, uh, and what can be used as proof of income when you are interviewing with, uh, for an Amazon DSP delivery business application? Well, you can actually, uh, I mean, it, it really depends, but you can actually have pay stuffs that works fantastically. A copy of last year's federal tax return, additional information like your social security number, the income amount, the date, the employer name when applicable, okay? And uh, what are the common proof of income documents? Well, pay stubs, I've said this before, proof of income letter. You can also have last year tax returns. You can have a wage and tax statement. This is your W-2, okay? And uh, if you have an unearned income, in other words, you not you don't have a nine to five job or you get an income from somewhere so that you can actually uh, make money, you can show your social security proof of income letter, your annuity statement, your pension distribution statements, I'm talking here about your 1099-R, okay? Your court-ordered agreements, your unemployment benefits. If you have a workers' compensation letter, this is also good in terms of uh, proof of income. And if you are self-employed and you are looking to get, you're looking to get into the Amazon DSP delivery business program, you can actually, if you are self-employed, you, you can show a wage and tax statement for self-employed. We are speaking about a 1099. You can also show a profit and loss statement or ledger documentation, okay, which includes your cost, expenses, and revenue, or you can include your bank statements. So those are the things you can actually show the Amazon DSV interviewer to say that, hey, listen, here is my proof of income. Here is how much I'm making right now or how this is how much I've been making the last five years or last three years or, or last year, okay? And, and make sure that you are able to reconcile the numbers that you are showing on those uh, reports, on those documents, to the numbers that you have put in your application process. There must be a match. Now, speaking about the paperwork, you must show to absolutely get into the program. You also need to talk about education. So you wanna show a full educational history including dates of attendance and GPAs. Amazon really cares about that. They really cares about that. You might be thinking, you might be thinking, well, this is uh, for a delivery business. I don't need a high GPA. Yeah, you might not need it, but they want to know, they want to have a full picture of you. They want to know who they're talking to. Okay. So it's really important. So you want to start with your most recent formal educational experience, if you have some. Okay, and for many people, this will be a high school diploma or a post-secondary degree with a major in a field relevant to the position you are applying for. But guess what? You don't have to to have a, a, a degree in a delivery business. I don't even know if, if such a degree exists. However, just be truthful because Amazon is going to double check, triple check this your, your, your statements, okay? And describe any additional experience that you have that is relevant to the Amazon DSP delivery business. It's important, okay? And you also, and this is also very important, you want to finish with what you do to continue to learn because Amazon wants their partner programs, their, their partner or their partners to learn, to have a lifelong learning process in place, okay? And, and one thing I want to say is, please, be honest about your achievement. So if you let some of, some of your schooling uncompleted or if you never attended college, you may, you may be self-conscious about sharing these details with 
and Amazon DSP delivery business interviewer. Telling the whole story is important though, and leaving out details can lead to awkward clarifications. And you don't want that because as I said, Amazon is a big corporation. They will find out sooner or later if you lied on your resume. And it's really not worth it. And this just to kick up this kicks up things the wrong way. You want to appear as a legit, as an honest person. Okay. So this is why you want to tell the truth. Okay. And discuss your, your education's past, present, and future. Even if you don't have a college degree, talk to Amazon about what you're doing right now to basically beef up your education, to basically hone your skills, to constantly learn. That's what we're interested in. Constant learning. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another uh, section of the Awesome Story Kiwi Show. In today's conversation, I'll, I'm talking to you about the Amazon DSP delivery business, the paperwork you must absolutely have to get approved right away. And now let's talk about finances. So Amazon will want to know your personal financial information, including assets and liabilities. Remember that to get into the program, you got to have 10 to 30 to 40 grand in liquid assets. In other words, the money is disposable. It's available. Okay. And you need to actually prove your uh, financial situation through several things. But most of the times you have to uh, prepare a personal financial statement. So a personal financial statement is basically, let's say it's a spreadsheet that details the assets and liabilities of uh, your of an, of, of an individual couple or a business at a specific point in time. Okay. Typically, the spreadsheet consists of two columns with assets listed on the left and liabilities on the right. Okay. And Amazon wants to see this because they want to analyze your current financial status, enabling them to track your net worth and uh, whether you have set financial goals for yourself. This is important. So what are assets and liabilities? So assets, very, very simply, they represent what you own and liabilities represent what you owe. Okay. So when we talk about assets, we are speaking about account balances in their savings account, certificates, money market accounts, your investment balances in stocks, ETFs, mutual funds, bonds, annuities, cash surrender value of life insurance commodities, your retirement accounts such as 401ks and IRAs, real estate if you have some, and valuable personal property. I'm speaking here about vehicles, boats, jewelry, or collectibles, okay? And in terms of liabilities, we are talking about credit cards, student loans, unpaid medical bills or unpaid taxes, mortgages or vehicle loans, loans that you have co-signed. Okay, so how do you calculate net worth? Very simple. All you have to do, you just have to subtract your total liabilities from your total assets. So if you do that, your difference is your net worth. Okay, and uh, if you have negative net worth, this is still okay if this is just temporary. Amazon is not going to disqualify you automatically because you have a negative net worth. As long as you have the money, the initial startup capital, they are requesting for you to get into the program. That's fine. Okay, and remember that your personal financial statement is like a photo, but your net worth is like a movie. So, so while your personal financial statement is a static snapshot of your net worth at a specific moment in time, net worth is constantly in motion as investment balances, interest rates, and property values fluctuates and liabilities are reduced. So, so here you have it. Now, they also want to talk to you about your service. So Amazon will consider your full military service information if applicable. And, and, and we love this about Amazon because they're basically giving, the, they're giving a chance to everybody, including servicemen to get into the program, including uh, you know veterans to get into the program. So this is really good, okay? And when we talk about military service, we are speaking about several military services, remember, you can be enlisted or officer, okay? 
because in, a, in all military branches, service members are divided into two categories, enlisted or officer. So when you talk to the Amazon DSP interviewer, you want to make sure that you mention that, okay? It's important. You also can think about whether you are full-time, in other words, active duty, or part-time in the reserve, okay? Because reserve service members receive the same training as their active duty peers, but they do close, they are doing so close to home until they're needed to deploy, okay? And although some reservists serve full-time, most usually hold a regular full-time civilian job and typically train one weekend per month plus two weeks of field exercises each year. So you also have to think about the National Guard. You can mention the National Guard if you were part of the National Guard. So the Army National Guard and the Air National Guard are community-based and report to the governor of their respective states unless called to protect U.S. domestic interests in times of conflict or natural disasters. So those are really things you need to think, think about. So when we talk about the types of service, you want to consider the Army, you can also consider the the Marine Corps, the 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 Marine the Marine Corps. Okay, the Navy also is so really important. The Air Force, the Coast Guard. So you basically need to talk about those things specifically because what I'm trying to tell you here is that if you mention military service, don't be vague. Do not be broad because uh, the Amazon DSP interviewer really wants to know what are we talking about. They want to know what kind of uh, service you are in okay this is really important so you gotta you gotta you gotta be very clear here coast guard air force navy marine corps or uh, the army okay and in terms of your your status as a full-time versus a part-time you have to mention that those things are important <music> Thank you so much for your attention, folks. I really appreciate it. In today's conversation, I was talking to you about the Amazon DSP delivery business, the paperwork you must absolutely have to get approved right away. So I gave you an overview about the program first. Then I spoke about paperwork as diverse as resume. Okay. We, are talking, we also talked about your work history. We talked about uh, your income. We talked about your education. We spoke about your finances, and we spoke about your military service, if any. Thank you so much for your attention. I will speak to you another time, but until then, remember, stay marvelous. <music>